I all of a sudden became an African. <laughs> Correctness. African American. I'm not African. I'm American. I'm not African. I'm American. I'm not African. DNA does not change just like that. 500 years of intermixing with another nationality, and all of a sudden, all of your physical attributes just change to something that does not look like the original land where you're from. Like if you get a thousand women from Ethiopia, you bring them to Chicago, they start intermixing with all the people from Chicago, and 500 years later, don't none of their doggone children look like they from Ethiopia. DNA don't work like that, people. I'm sorry if I'm but Why the fuck only people with color got some African American and black? Even when you even say that word, you feel like a slave. You feel like you come second. So to, just to be, just to stand up to a title that you come second, it's crazy. I guess I was talking so much passion and anger that the words, it, it just made me mad for somebody in my community to ask me some stupid shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I be getting mad and niggas ask me. I don't know how far back and I don't know what country in Africa I'm from, but I do know that my roots are in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I'm an American and that's a colorless person because we are all people. I have lots of things running through my veins. I mean, you're going to get a lot of flack for saying you're not African-American. You know that, right? I don't label myself. Okay. So I want you to say what you really mean by that. What I really mean by that is I'm an American. I'm not an African-American. I'm an American. I was born on American soil. But I did go back to the motherland, and I love it. And made millions going back to the motherland. But I was born in America. When the Europeans came to the Native Americans, what they like to call them Native Americans, but the Indians land. We don't call them European Americans. So I don't want to be called an African American. I'm an American. I'm a, you know what I'm saying? You can call me a black American, but I'm an American. When I competed in the Olympics, they didn't say fighting uh, an African American. They said uh, that American that's fighting out of the red corner or out the blue corner. All you got to do is go type in some words and you can get it right now and, and, and understand where you've come from and how special you are. Can I just end with this one thing? These four brothers sitting here, we didn't all come from Africa. And there was a united, there was, there was a country before 1492, and our history goes way beyond 1492. So you can't start us at 1492. We were always here. We were always here. We were always here. We were always here. Africa does not create dark skin and have a patent on dark skin. It's the, the position of the equator. The sun gives you melanin, gives you dark skin. And, you know, the people in North America live in a more forest environment. You know, the weather is balanced. It goes through pole shifts and, you know, seasonal changes. So, you know, it's a period in North America when we are just basically in the sun. And it's a period when we out the sun. And that, that plays a part in skin color and hair texture and everything. Because if you look at the people in Africa... They live in a more tropical environment, a more desertish environment. They're in the heat all year. So, you know, that America, if you look at this map, and you look at this map of North America, just for start, you see the southern part of the U. that's the darkest. Look at the southern part of the United States. You see it's red, and you see most of it is yellow. And then you go further up to Canada, there's blue. Then if you see the darkest part is really in California, like on the southwest. And then as you go down, you get more into a red zone. You look at South America, Central America, you know. And then you go across Africa, the same thing. So a lot of people can't, you know, they can't understand that. So I ask anybody to use their common sense. You want to tell me? that the indigenous people of this country had light skin, straight hair, pale skin, in in these hot, humid, like hot, like Florida. That's where you might see the darkest people in this country.
are going to be in Florida, California, because they're in sun. The sun, they're in the heat all year long. And, you know, you can't tell me the indigenous people of this country, especially in the southeast, in the southwest, the Caribbean, Mexico, have pale skin, stringy hair, because those climates do not produce that. If anybody been to Florida, you know everybody in Florida is dark. So you're in that humidity that plays a part. 500 nations, it shows the indigenous people of Hispanola. And you can see that so common sense has not, you know, a lot of people have been dumbed down. And if you go to Africa, the lightest Africans that you will see live in a more forest kind of environment. You go to South Africa, the people are more they are lightest, they have, you know, like the hair is kinky, they are lighter skin, um, the eyes are more slanted because that is the environment. They live in a more forest is similar to North America, South Africa I'm talking about. Then you go to West Africa, it's more of a tropical environment. So I would say West Africa is more similar to like somewhere in Florida, um, you know, further North America, you see darker skin Indians with straighter hair. You look at the old pictures of the uh, Algonquin, the Narragansett people. You can see the thickness, but the straightness. So you look at the people in North America, so-called black people, are more copper-colored, copper-skinned people. This is a Tadeja, I'm see Indian. When William Penn came to New Jersey, the same William Penn that Pennsylvania, Penn State, and Penn University is named after the same William Penn that's on the Quaker's Grist Box here. I mean, when he came in contact with, with the Lenape Indians in 1683, William Penn described the Lenape as being a complexion black, but by design, like the gypsies in England. It's how William Penn described the Lenape, who's also known as the Delaware. You know what I mean? That's in the Northeast region, around New Jersey. Delaware and the Lenape still exist that today in that same region in New Jersey and Delaware. Plains natives or Mongoloids did not live in the Southeast, the Northeast, or California or the Pacific, historically. The only area that the Plains or Mongoloid looking natives lived was the Northwest and the Southwest, and they only got to the Southwest in, in Arizona and New Mexico and Colorado because they moved down, they migrated from the Northwest in Montana, Dakota, in Idaho and Washington, that's the only area that the Mongoloids or Plains people historically live. They are migrational people, so-called black Americans or autochthonous. They we originated from the soil of the earth. The soil of North America is where misnamed, reclassified black Americans originated from. So historically, the only people that lived in the Southeast and the, the Northeast and the West Coast were so-called black people, indigenous people that look like so-called black people according to the Europeans' earliest historical documented accounts. There were no plains or mongoloids on the East Coast, the Southeast, or the West Coast, ever. They only lived in the Northwest, the mongoloids. The mongoloids only lived in the Northwest. The mongoloids never lived in the Southeast, in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, the Carolinas, Virginia, Carolina, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Jeremy, California, Texas, Mongoloid never lived in none of those places that was only indigenous, misnamed black people. Mongoloids only lived in the Northwest. In Virginia, well over a decade before the first imported Negroes were shipped into Jamestown, Virginia from the Caribbean in 1619, John Smith in 1607 had encountered the Powhatan Nation and described them as being so-called misnomer black people. The same John Smith that we've seen in the Pocahontas movie. John Smith had described Pocahontas' people as being indigenous black people, according to his own historical voyage accounts. John Smith, when he was at war with the Powhatan Indians, he described the Powhatan Algonquin chief as being more like a devil than a man, with some 200 more as black as himself. from Massachusetts and Rhode Island to Virginia and the Carolinas, that was all Algonquin territory, and they looked at like exactly how the, the Narragansett people looked to thee and how the Wampanoag people looked to thee. That's all the same people. The ancient Kokoro, the Koro um, of Haiti, 
Hey, Ty. Represented a nation of beasts. This is what he referred to them as, as beasts by the historical song. Whose historical song? The Albion's historical song. So, he's saying that the indigenous people of Haiti were black. Which we know that they are predominantly so-called black now. California of the Carib Islands called Black Caribs or the Guiani by others. It was white, so-called Black Carib. And it was what's called the Kalafanami. Or the Kalafanam. You have the Okoro of Thank you.